Hi, my name is John Gibbons and I run a company called John Gibbons Body Master Method and I run a series of courses based typically at Oxford University. I also have written many books and one of them is on the anatomy of the pelvis, SI joint and lumbar spine. And today for this anatomy series, I was kindly donated a female human pelvis by a good friend of mine. And I thought I would go through some of the anatomical landmarks and ligaments associated with this fascinating area. I think many people struggle in terms of the anatomy, but more so probably with the assessment of a patient. So for this one, we will just discuss what is found or maybe what's not found on, on this pelvic sort of area. If we consider this um, as a three-dimensional bowl, what that means is if you think about the anterior aspect will affect the lateral aspect, if you like, which will affect the posterior aspect in here. So if we start maybe at the posterior aspect, then most people obviously know about the sacroiliac joint, but you'd be amazed how many ligaments directly attach and keep all this together. If you're looking at the, the bony landmarks to start with, Think about the, the three main bones of the pelvis. We've got the ischium at the posterior inferior aspect here. So this would be known as the ilium, which is the larger bone. And then anteriorly, we then have the, the pubic bone at the front. We've also got the joint at the front, known as the symphysis pubis. And we've got a joint lateral. And then this would be the hip joint, but medically it's called the iliofemoral, the ilium on the femur. And then posterior, we have what we call the sacrum on the ilium. So we call it the sacroiliac, but also other authors like myself will call it the ilio on the sacrum. So they'll call it the iliosacral joint. Even though in theory, they are one of the same, but we can come back to that. Between the ages of 18 to 30, give or take, the actual ilium, ischium and pubis is three separate bones, but as we get older, these three bones conjoin to be known as one bone, and that one bone is actually called the innominates. So when I mention the word innominate, it's a conjoined ilium, and the pubis, and the ischium is now one bone. But obviously if you were younger, you'll have three separate bones. When we come to palpate the structure, think about there are many, many muscles associated, so we can't truly get to the landmarks I will identify, but I'll mention that as we go through. I think most people, in terms of therapy, will know a lot of these landmarks I go through, but it's always good to recap. First one we will come onto is the anterior superior iliac spine, and my finger is on the attachment here. So think of the name anterior at the front, superior above, the iliac spine. So this would be known as the iliac crest here, and then it comes down to a bony landmark called the ASIS. And in terms of an attachment, you can see this structure, which is known as the inguinal or inguinal ligament, which will go to this bony landmark called the pubic tubercle, but it's mainly for the attachment of a muscle called sartorius. Below the ASIS will be this bony landmark called the anterior inferior iliac spine, and this will be one of the attachments for the rectus femoris, which is one of the hip flexor and part of the quadricep group. Directly underneath the inguinal ligament will be this space, which I'll come on to, where the psoas muscle will come through, conjoined with the iliacus, but also there are other structures like the femoral artery, which will come down, which is a branch of the iliac artery, which is a branch of the um, descending aorta. You've also got the femoral nerve coming underneath it here, and that will be from L2, L3, L4, and the femoral nerve or femoral nerve will supply the quadricep. Also, we have the returning vein as well. This area of the ilium is called the iliac fossa, and then this is where the muscle of iliacus will attach. Coming further down, so the pubic tubercle here, which I've mentioned, we've actually, on the pubic area, we've got the superior ramus here, like for instance, um, this area, more so the tubercle where the rectus abdominis will attach. And then if I come down onto the pubic, it comes onto the inferior ramus of pubis, and that's where some of the adductor muscles will attach, like the adductor longus here yeah, and pectineus. And then these muscles will then continue onto the femur. The pectineus will go to the lesser tubercle, in fact, the lesser trochanter, I should say, apologize. And then there's a ridge on the posterior part of the femur called the linear aspera. This area here is called the 
ischial tuberosity. And then it is where mainly the hamstrings will attach. So the bicep femoris will come onto this area, so will the semi-tendinosis and the semi-membranosis. Interesting fact about the bicep femoris, the bicep femoris is thought of, rather than directly attaching to the tuberosity of the ischium, it continues via a fascial sling onto this ligament, which is called the sacrotuberous ligament, and it's a continuation. And Tom Myers has a, a, a superficial back line where he talks about the connection going up on the same side to the erector, all the way up to the occipital, whereas Andre Vleeman talks about the uh, posterior longitudinal sling, where it connects directly onto the contralateral erector, all the way up to the occiput. Now, on the posterior aspect, we've got an area just here, which is called the posterior superior iliac spine. So it's actually this area. So rather than it being, you can't really see directly, there's a bony landmark here and there's a bony landmark here. But it's typically in line with about S2, the second sacral tubercle around this area. So if I'm looking at S2 and I come across, it'll be more likely this one along here. Inferior to that, just here, we've actually got the posterior inferior iliac spine. So there's the PSIS and this would be the PIIS here. If you look at this area around there, then this would be known as the greater sciatic foramen. And then this will be where the sciatic nerve will come through, like my finger, will come through that. And the sciatic nerve will come from L4, L5, S1, S2, and a little bit of S3. So this is the greater sciatic foramen. And then directly in between these two ligaments here, this would be known as the, the lesser sciatic foramen here. And then another foramen will be this area in here, and that will be known as the obturator foramen. Foramen means a hole, and you can tell, obviously, there is a cover, yeah, a fascial cover and muscle attachments directly to these areas. Piriformis, as an example, will come from the S2 to S4, and it will cross the greater sciatic foramen, and potentially the sciatic nerve will go underneath on 20% of the population, and then for others, it might go, in fact, it actually goes through uh, one in five, so that's probably 20% going through the piriformis, and then for the remainder, it actually goes below that. And the performance will go to this bony landmark, which is called the greater trochanter. So this is part of the femur here. Other parts of the femur, we've got the lesser trochanter, which I mentioned earlier, and then this would be the neck around it in this area. This is the posterior part of the iliac crest, where the gluteals mainly will attach onto this area. Now, onto the sacrum, you can't really see that many landmarks, but on this corner, we can call this corner the apex. On the apex, we also call it the ILA, which is the inferior lateral angle, where the ligaments will directly attach, mainly the sacrotuberous ligament and the one underneath it, and that will be known as the sacrospinous, because it will go from the ischial spine and it will go to the sacrum. So sacrospinous ligament. The coccyx is covered by lots of ligaments here. So you can see the tip of the coccyx, yeah, which is relatively straight in this case. Sometimes they can get damaged and then hook under. These would be known as the sacral spines along this area. And you can see on this one, we've actually got a connection of L5. So this would be the vertebral body of L5. This would be where the end plate would be located, where the disc of L4 would sit on top of that. This area in here would be known as the pedicle. And then this is the transverse process. This would be of L5, just on the side here. And then this would be the facet joint, just this one. If you're looking at L5, this would be the superior facet of L5. And then that would articulate with the L4 inferior facet and then just below that would be the inferior facet of L5 and then articulate in with the first sacral spine. This would be known as the lamina just in here and then this would be known as the spinous process. You can actually see the disc on this one I'm not sure how we would see that but the intervertebral disc and we have 23 discs would be located just on this area just there. And 
that will be the main bony landmarks in the next series of the anatomy then we will cover the ligaments of the pelvis and the SI joint.